You've probably heard the phrase, too cool for school. But what about a school that's too cool to be put in a pool? And by pool, I mean conference. But that doesn't rhyme, you see. Anyway, here are the stadiums of the independent FBS teams. Aggie Memorial Stadium, home of the New Mexico State Aggies. Straight away you'll notice the unique design, where the earth goes all the way to the top of the seating, despite there being two tiers of it. You don't see that too often, and it was an interesting choice considering it's a fairly arid climate, meaning that the grass isn't always in the best of shape. But that's not the grass that matters, that grass is artificial. I noticed that behind the north end zone there's an array of plants in lieu of a grass berm. Kinda wish they did that for the entirety of the exterior. That definitely would have been one of a kind. This building here looks like it's straight out of Miami Beach. But yeah, cool little stadium. Mikey Stadium, home of the Army Black Knights. It's a stadium that's held in very high regard, and that's partially due to its location in the beautiful leafy surrounds of the West Point Military Academy on the Hudson River. But the body of water that you see right there is actually a reservoir, not the river itself. Nonetheless, water is water. The campus itself looks incredible, and I wish the entire stadium's exterior was built in that same style. That would have been epic. It's not, but there are a couple of nods to that style of architecture. And considering the team are called the Black Knights, it's quite fitting. Yeah, this stadium deserves this reputation. Beautiful. Lavelle Edwards Stadium, home of the BYU Cougars. This stadium's design is slightly unusual in that it's, it's like many bowl stadiums that you'll see, just with empty corners. And of course, it's not a bowl, all the stands are separate. The exterior is very bare bones, it's just exposed steel and concrete for the most part. But that's not the stadium's strength. I often talk about the view that spectators can enjoy from their seats, but Lavelle Edwards Stadium is all about the view. I guess they've kept the stadium rather simple so you don't get distracted from the spectacular mountains that make up the backdrop. Particularly if you're sitting on the western side. Stunning. Find me a stadium in Utah that doesn't have a stunning backdrop and I'll give you $10,000. Oh, for legal reasons I have to point out that I'm referring to 10,000 Zimbabwean dollars uh, converted into US dollars which is less than one cent. Uh, so I, I, I'll have to round that down. Notre Dame Stadium, or Notre Dame Stadium. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> Who says tomato? I do. But at least I don't say potato, that's just weird. It's home of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Definitely the most well-known independent team. The design shares some similarities with college football's biggest stadium, Michigan Stadium. But it's a lot more built up, it's not sunken into the ground, and it's much more... beige. But one thing that sets it apart even further, is that it's the only stadium in the world with its own personal touchdown Jesus. But I think the Iranians have copied that though, because they all seem to have their own personal touchdown Ayatollah. And of course the North Koreans have their own touchdown Kim. But that actually predates the touchdown Jesus. Oh, and I should mention that those initial shots were taken during construction. This is what it looks like now. Pratt and Whitney Stadium, home of the Yukon Huskies. Well, I think it more often goes by the name Rentschler Field. It was the name of the airfield that the stadium was built on, which belonged to Pratt and Whitney, a company that makes these things. It's the newest stadium in this conference. Uh, no, sorry, the newest independent stadium. It's not in a conference, and it's fairly apparent, it just looks very cutting edge, literally speaking, how the seating is at sharp angles, and how the upper deck comes to a point in each corner, much like Arrowhead Stadium. I like it, but it still remains a fairly simple stadium. There's not much to the exterior for the most part, but it's a fine stadium, and you can take that to the bank. Really? Do you think anybody's going to get a laugh out of that? I, I, I just thought of it then. I, but you can't take that to the bank. Some things are just better off left unsaid. Alright. Okay? Okay. Good. 
Warren McGurk Alumni Stadium, home of the UMass Minutemen. It's the smallest of the independents and one of the smallest FBS stadiums. You may have noticed the strange concave shape behind each end zone. I'm not sure why they did that either. Unlike many stadiums where the seating is sunken into the ground, here it's quite the opposite. The lowest of the seating is elevated above the field by, I'd say, a good 12 feet. The design was like that to begin with, but they sunk the field further into the ground to accommodate more seats. But other than that, it's just two of the same stands on each side, nothing but a video board behind one end zone and a training center behind the other, which looks quite good and its convex shape is a perfect fit. Williams Stadium, home of the Liberty Flames. Firstly, since these shots were taken, the stadium has changed quite drastically, and I'll get to those changes soon. But the western stand has remained the same, which is good because it looks great. Particularly the exterior which backs onto the mini track and soccer stadium. The other side has since become a double-decker stand, and they're also planning on making it a complete horseshoe behind the south end zone, which is currently a grass berm, albeit artificial grass. And those were the FBS Independence Stadiums. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.